Texas is slipping when it comes to economic issues. It's August 2nd, 2024, and these are your headlines. The Club for Growth Foundation has now published its 2023 Texas State Economic Scorecard, revealing significant declines in economic growth scores for Republican lawmakers in both the Texas House and the Senate. This analysis evaluates legislators on their support for policies promoting free markets and economic growth and includes votes on issues such as school choice, property tax relief, and corporate welfare handouts. In the Texas House, the average Republican score decreased to 48%. It was 64% in 2021. Representatives Brian Harrison, Matt Schaefer, and Tony Tinderholt each received perfect scores of 100%, making them the highest-rated Republicans in the chamber. The lowest ratings went to State Representative Steve Allison and Drew Darby. They tied at 17%. Now, Steve Allison was defeated by attorney Mark LaHood in the primary election earlier this year, so he won't be coming back. The average score for Republican senators also dipped to 58% from 76% in the prior session. The highest rated Republican, State Senator Mays Middleton, achieved an 87% score, while the Lowest score was held by Senator Robert Nichols at 26%. David McIntosh, the president of the Club for Growth Foundation, emphasized the need for greater fiscal responsibility in Texas. He said from the outside looking in, many people assume that Texas is one of the most conservative states in the union. However, our analysis proves there is still more work to be done in Austin to promote fiscal responsibility and ensure that tax dollars are working for the taxpayers instead of special interests. The Club for Growth Foundation plans to release similar scorecards for state legislatures nationwide. Texas has won a major lawsuit against the Biden-Harris administration, forcing them to continue constructing the wall on the southern border. Now, the attorney general's office revealed the court found that the White House unlawfully sought to prevent congressionally approved funds from being used for the border. Congress had approved back in December 2019 about $1.375 $1.375 billion for a border wall and other construction. In 2020, Congress again approved approximately $1.4 billion for the projects as part of a broader COVID-19 relief bill. However, after taking office in 2021, President Joe Biden signed an executive order ending the declaration of the border crisis as a national emergency. The White House argued in the order that tabling the designation allowed them to order the U.S. Department of Homeland Security to redirect border wall funds. Instead, the funds were shifted to other border projects, including environmental remediation, flood control, and cleanup efforts. In the latest ruling from the judge, a permanent injunction against the administration likely ends the battle over the border funds, at least for now. The Biden administration declined to appeal the temporary injunction, is expected not to appeal the permanent injunction that was issued, According to data from the U.S. Customs and Border Protection, there have been over 10 million encounters between CBP agents and illegal border crossers since Biden took office in 2021. I bet that number is, in reality, a lot more. In comparison, there were only 2.5 million encounters under the Trump administration. Biden administration officials have consistently argued for other approaches to border security that don't involve a wall or other barriers, despite their demonstrated effectiveness. What are the important things out there in Texas politics and Texas news that matter to you and what can you do about it? That's what we want to bring you with the Luke Messia show on a weekly basis for 20 to 30 minutes. That way you can get the information and go do something for the rest of your week. I look forward to coming to you every Wednesday. With high turnout presidential elections just a few short months away, local officials across the country are gearing up to recruit the millions of workers needed to help voters cast their ballots in November. In Texas, an army of temporary workers are needed to staff polling places on Election Day and for 12 days of early voting. A Texas GOP Vice Chair Dorinda Randall told Texas Scorecard she's spearheading a grassroots committee within the Republican Party of Texas that is encouraging voters to serve at the polls. She said, voting is not enough right now. We need to make this election too big to rig. And while federal and state offices are on the November ballot, the elections are administered at the county level and staffed by local voters in the county. Paid poll worker positions include election judges, clerks, and mail ballot review boards. Judges are recommended by each political party and are hired by the county. Each judge may then select clerks to work their polling place. 
Volunteer positions include poll greeters who work outside the polls and poll watchers who are appointed by candidates or political parties to observe the voting process inside polling places. Texas Republicans have set election integrity as a high priority again this year and are already organizing locally for November. Texans interested in serving as a poll worker or for volunteering for the 2024 presidential election should contact their county election official or county party office. For more of today's stories, go to texasscorecard.com.